Welcome, everybody, and uh, welcome to this great segment that we've got on delivering business impact with Siam. Uh, my name is Richard Ma. I head up uh, customer identity for the APJ region, Asia Pac, and Japan. And I'm lucky enough to have John Lim with me, who's our senior solutions engineer. So we're going to really spend quite a bit of time in understanding about customer identity and the business value it can provide. So let's get started. To cover this off, we're really going to focus, first of all, in describing what is customer identity and access management and really define what it is, what it does, the business problems it solves, and then focus on how customer identity makes a difference. And then lastly, we're really going to focus on what's the challenge for customer identity and access management. And then I'm going to hand to John, who's going to give you a, a little bit of a demonstration on the technology and so you can really see it and it really brings it to life. First of all, what is customer identity access management? So fundamentally, if you're building a mobile application, a web application, or even an API, think of all those functions that users need to access and just start using your application. So think about sign up, registration, forgotten password, multi-factor, single sign on, single sign out, signing in with social identity. All these features are often baked in to your customer application. Customer identity access management is about providing that functionality within your application. So you can focus on innovating in your own application rather than have to worry building and maintaining your own customer identity access management. That's the core premise around what customer identity access management is. As you can see here, uh, customer identity access management really sits across every use case and every industry. So whether it be software and technology or B2B SaaS environments or SaaS environments in general, finance, media, in terms of streaming use cases or publications, e-commerce, travel, energy and manufacturing, all these really is a horizontal problem regardless of the industry a way you need to provide identity and access management to your customers so they can do business with you and interact with your services. So very much a horizontal uh, capability that's needed. So what's the problem? You know, what's the issue that customer identity access management looks to solve? The first problem that we see is really wasted energy, resources, and time building and maintaining and enhancing your own identity service for your customer-facing apps. Expending a whole amount of time on maintaining this rather than innovating in your core. The second challenge that is often seen is this is the front door to your uh, customer-facing application, be it a B2B application or a B2C application. And if that door is hard to open or it's hard to get access to, that can really impact your customer experience, ultimately can affect the adoption of your application, which translates into revenue or customer experience or customer churn or even cost to serve. So if customers are struggling to hop online and serve themselves, they may try and opt for another channel, be it your self-service call center channel, um, which is a higher cost to serve. The next uh, problem that we see is you could have multiple applications that you're serving your customers with multiple channels or multiple brands. And if you're providing a different user identity underpinning those channels, you really have a disconnected customer experience across those channels. And that means if you don't know who the customer is, you can't personalize the experience, you can't cross sell and upsell to them and really provide them that really engaging customer experience that you want across all your different channels and digital experiences. The other issue that we're seeing is that organizations in these applications that were built five, seven, ten years ago, and they were built using very uh, archaic ways of developing software, so very monolithic applications, and that's really affecting their productivity from a developer standpoint, an engineering standpoint. So they want to break up these applications into smaller services, microservices, and often customer identity is baked into that monolith and preventing them from moving to that microservices architecture so they can innovate much faster. And then lastly, uh, which we're definitely seeing a prevalence of late, is 
you know, really being concerned about the risk of a data breach and bad actors. These applications are customer facing on the internet and subject to various types of attacks like brute force attacks. So that's another concern that um, customer identity access management looks to solve. So what makes customer identity access management different from traditional identity access management? So fundamentally, as you can see here, there's a, a quite a few differences that make it extremely different. The stakeholders are different. Often you're dealing with engineering or the chief technology officer or the head of digital or the head of product. The number of users can scale up into the millions of users compared to traditional workforce identity. It's integrated tightly into your marketing environment, your MarTech environment. It's also really sensitive to the customer experience, right? Super sensitive. And it's often a foundation for e-commerce or delivering that end customer experience or a loyalty program. It often may rely on lower friction ways of allowing your customers to engage. So signing up with a social identity or not even having a password. But importantly, it's subject to various privacy concerns, having customer identity residing in the application as well. So these make this very different and therefore the requirements needed that customer identity needs to solve also are very different. Some of the biggest problems that are really affecting the adoption of customer identity are one, the effect that it has on user experience. To make any changes, it really impacts, it's very sensitive. And there's this balance around the customer experience and security, which we'll talk a little bit later and John will show in the demonstration. A lack of expertise, needing a high level expertise to implement these systems is often a barrier and a challenge that we've seen from other organizations preventing them from adopting it. So any technology that makes it simple and easy to use is really important, right? And being able to justify the business case behind it as well. So a good example of this is how it affects um, the sensitivity to a customer experience is how many users admit to reusing a password across their applications. So in fact, 66% of users say that they reuse passwords across their various applications. And the reason they do that is because they can't remember all these passwords, obviously. And that makes the user experience easier, so they don't need to remember it, but it also affects the security. So there's this dial between user experience and security, which uh, we'll see later in the demonstration. So this is one of the barriers as well that prevents it. So we're lowering the security if people are using passwords. So what can we do to make it easier for the user. The other challenge is it can really affect the adoption and purchase of your various services online or signing up for your services. 83% of consumers have abandoned a cart or a sign up process due to just challenges of using the identity service. So if you give up the user a whole bunch of fields they need to fill out before they can create an account, that's often a disincentive for them to use and sign up the service as well. Even just getting the user to create a password can often mean somebody will abandon and not create an account in your application as well. So we'll see this is one of the very important things we need to do when um, providing a customer identity and access management system for your customers. And then lastly, um, challenges when managing the customer identity is really that point where we need to improve the security posture and that seems to be the main challenge while not affecting the customer experience. So this is also one of the core challenges that we'll see as well. So with that, let me hand over to John and take you through a demonstration of Okta's Customer Identity Cloud Solution, or Zero. Thank you, Richard. As Richard pointed out earlier, SIAM, or Customer Identity and Access Management, is very different from traditional IAM. It comes with its own unique set of challenges. In fact, getting customer identity right is hard, but does it have to be difficult? And I'll be walking you through some of Officer's features here today that map really well to those challenges, enabling you not only to overcome those challenges, but also easily achieve your SIAM objectives. In SIAM, it often begins with a consumer-facing application that requires an authentication or identity solution to manage its users, like I have here with Travel Zero, a fictional travel booking web application that we'll use to test drive Officer today. So imagine if you're building a customer-facing application 
Typically, one of the first steps in a journey is to integrate your application with an identity solution. Office Zero makes it really easy for you to integrate your applications with Office Zero, greatly shortening that time to value and the time to market. This is the Office Zero Management Dashboard, which is a graphical user interface for you to manage your tenant configuration. To integrate our application with Office Zero, we simply need to register our application with Office Zero by clicking Create Application, follow the resultant prompts, and you'll be up and running. In fact, did you know that 80% of customers go live with Office Zero with a single application in a week, and 94% of customers go live with Office Zero in a single application within a month? So that's pretty amazing. As Sion is typically omnichannel, it is important that your identity solution supports a wide range of application types, which helps you achieve a single view of your customer across your different applications and different channels enabling you to better personalize the customer experience and thus improve the ability to upsell and cross-sell to customers. In that regard, Office Zero supports a wide range of application types, as you can see here. We support native apps, which could be your mobile apps, single-page web apps, regular web applications, as well as your machine-to-machine -machine applications. We also support over 64 ready to use quick starts and SDKs. So regardless of the tech stack that you're on, you can simply pick one up, drop in your app, and you're up and running. For Travel Zero here, I've already registered the application with Off Zero, followed the prompts, downloaded and installed the SDK. And just like that, I've integrated the application with Off Zero. Now let's click sign in to see what happens. When a user tries to log in now, the user is redirected to Off0, where Off0 is handling the authentication request. And what you see here is what we call the universal login experience. I'm going to pause here briefly and talk about branding. I'm curious to know how many of you that's listening in, if you're building out your own app customer facing application would require to customize this login page. Probably many of you. And I wouldn't be surprised because one of the key requirements in Siam is the ability to have full control over the login experience because that affects branding, engagements, and conversions. Now, Austro allows you to fully customize the authentication journey, including this login page, or if you prefer, a no-code option through configuration. So if you're in a bucket that requires full control over the user experience down to the pixel. Office Zero has an advanced option here that allows you to have access to the HTML, allowing you to fully rip and replace the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you prefer a no-code option, Office Zero also allows you to customize the login page through configuration. As you can see here, you can simply modify or configure the colors the fonts, borders, the widget, so you can align the widget to the left, to the center, and or include a page background as well. So let's go ahead and save and publish that. If I come back to Travel Zero now and try and re-login, ta-da, a customized login page that's more in line with the Travel Zero corporate branding. Now let's quickly talk about login options which is an important consideration when you're trying to build out a frictionless login experience, which is to prevent drop-offs and drive conversions. Office Zero provide multiple ways for your users to log in into your applications, and we call them connections. As you can see here, we support traditional username password authentication, which we call a database connection. And the call out here is that this database connection or this database can be an Off Zero hosted database or through our extensibility, an external database that's hosted outside of Off Zero. For example, your on prem database. We also support social logins. Out of the box, Off Zero supports over 50 social connections and it contains the popular social providers like Google, Facebook, and Apple, Line the usual suspects. We also make it very easy for you to build your own social connections as long as they support OAuth2. And all these are done through configuration. 
We also support enterprise connections, which is particularly useful in B2B scenarios where your customers want to single sign on into your applications using their corporate IDP. And this is usually for usability and security reasons. As you can see, we support all popular open standards and popular IDPs that we see out there, making it very easy and quick for you to connect your applications to their corporate identity providers. All this done usually within minutes. We also support passwordless connections, which means your users no longer need to remember a password. You can simply log in into your applications using an SMS or email OTP or an email magic link. An extension to this is our support to allow users to log in with their device biometrics via the web of end standard. This is easily set up here by clicking identify first plus biometrics. Let me save that and let's actually see that in action. I might just come back here as well to my social connection here and enable Google as well so that we can see this option enable when we're trying to log in just a little bit. Right, so now coming back to Travel Zero, let's re log in. As I log in now, you can see that I have Google sign in enabled, which we enabled just before the screen. And we also have been presented with an identifier first approach. All right, I'm going to go ahead and enter my email and my password. And at this point, Opsio detects that my device supports WebOpN with bio device biometrics and is prompting me to enroll for it. I'm going to go ahead and enroll with my device biometrics. I've enabled it. So the next time I log in, I'm actually able to use my device biometrics to log in. So really quick recap here. In the last 10 minutes or so, we very quickly integrate our application with Auth0, customize the login experience with respect to branding and login options. But what about security? Remember Richard pointing out that Siam is subjected to internet scale attacks. Auth0 offers comprehensive attack protection features. For example, we provide bot detection, which will trigger a capture to prevent bots from logging in or signing up. It's interesting to note that also we can enable bot detection only for risky logins, right? thereby keeping that fine balance between security and usability. We also support suspicious IP throttling, brute force protection, as well as breach password detection, which prevents credential stuffing attacks. For those of you that may be unfamiliar with what a credential stuffing attack is, it is an attack vector that uses previously leaked credentials to try and gain access into other services. And it is a very successful attack vector, as Richard pointed out, because 66% of users actually admit to reusing their passwords. As you can see, we've enabled a number of these protections for our application. But because in cybersecurity, we need to defend in depth Let's further improve the security posture here by actually enabling MFA, multi-factor authentication. If I come back here to Travel Zero, you notice that I am actually able to view my building details, which shows me my sensitive credit card information. Let's actually improve the security posture here by implementing Step Up MFA to prompt the user for MFA only when the user is trying to access these sensitive information. Enabling MFA is very easy in Auth0, which is essentially just a two-step process. We simply select the MFA factors that we want to support and then decide when we would like to trigger it. As you can see in this dashboard here, we support a wide range of MFA factors. For example, we support hardware devices like your UB keys or your device biometrics, time-based, OTP, for example, Google Authenticator or similar, receiving push notifications in your own branded app, similar to many of those mobile banking applications. We also support SMS or voice call, as well as email for dual security. I've gone ahead and selected a number of these MFA factors. The next step is to decide how we want to trigger MFA. Notice that just like bot detection, we can select always, which means that you always trigger an MFA, which is kind of high friction, or also just for risky logging using our internal risk engine. However, we're going to select never here 
and use Ofsjo's extensibility to write an Ofsjo rule to decide for ourselves when to trigger MFA, further fine-tuning that fine balance between usability and security. And that brings me to my favorite part of the platform, its extensibility. In Off0, we have the ability to write custom snippets of JavaScript code that will be executed as part of the authentication pipeline. We call them rules. And that gives us superpowers to customize the authentication journey. And in this case here, I've written a rule that will step up MFA. It's called contextual MFA step up. I'm going to enable it. And let's step into it and see what this rule does. As you can see, as I mentioned, it's just a snippet of JavaScript code. In our case here, it just contains a few lines of code. That essentially, if you read this code here, it's just saying that if a user is trying to perform a sensitive operation, let's actually trigger and force MFA. So I've enabled that. Let's come back to Travel Zero here. Let me log out just to show you that as I'm logging in, I'm not being triggered for MFA. I'm going to enter my username. And remember how we registered and enrolled for our device biometrics. So now I can actually just use my device biometrics to log in. And I'm logged into the application without any MFA prompt there. So now when I try to assess my billing information, the rule is kicking in and it's prompting me and stepping up authentication and prompting me for MFA. Notice that the MFA factors that the options that we have were the previous options that we enabled. I'm going with SMS here. And just like that, I passed MFA. I'm now able to view my credit card details. At this point, we've covered the basics of the Off0 platform, where we've integrated our application very quickly and easily, customized the login experience with respect to branding and login options, improved our security posture, and use our superpowers to customize our authentication journey by writing custom code. To conclude, SIAM is very different from traditional IAM and comes with its own set of unique challenges. And Off0 has been designed from the ground up to address these SIAM challenges in a very simple, easy, extensible, and developer-friendly manner that provides both balance to security and usability. Getting customer identity right is hard, but it doesn't have to be difficult because now there's off zero. So thank you for your time. I hope this session has provided value. Back to you, Richard. Thanks, John. That's great. Thanks very much. What a great sort of demonstration of customer identity in action and how, like you said, uh, it doesn't have to be difficult. So just to recap what we've gone through uh, now, we've sort of overviewed what is customer identity and access management. What's the problem? We sort of talked about the friction, the wasted engineering cost, how it can turn drop-offs and abandonment in terms of accessing your service, and that dial between customer experience and security and how it doesn't have to be a dial that you turn either way. It can inflect depending on what the customer is doing and, and use lower friction ways for customers to access your service. What customer, you know, how, what makes customer identity different in terms of being a, a customer identity uh, supporting a customer facing application with potentially millions of users on the internet. And uh, John took you through a demonstration. So hopefully you sort of saw how it pulls together security, privacy, and convenience in a single solution for your customer facing apps and APIs. Thanks so very much. Enjoy Octane.